Hey everybody, welcome back to All About The Popcorn. My name is Stephanie. If you guys are new, how about clicking that subscribe button? <laughs> So you guys, we have made it through the month of May. Also, I am a May baby. So for my fellow May babies and for my fellow Taurus, how about giving this video a like? Okay, let's go ahead and start off with the first on the list, which is I Love You Stupid or The Caro Imbecil and this, uh, you tried. I Love You Stupid is just, uh, I don't, uh, it's not good. Oh, so, uh, Natalia Tena. I know I'm horrible with names. Uh, she actually comes out in this movie. Uh, you may know her from Game of Thrones and she was also in Harry Potter. Basically the movie is what the 21st century man should be doing basically to get laid. So at the end it really makes some seem like a dick. Um, the whole concept of the movie is him trying to get over his ex-girlfriend and basically just reinventing himself. I mean, mind you, he does like start working out and eating better, so he does start looking better physically. The thing about the movie is, is him trying to find somebody else to sleep with to get over the ex-girlfriend. And you know what? It's, it's just not a good movie, you guys. It's All right, you guys, let's go ahead and move on to the next Netflix movie, which is The Lovebirds. This one was supposed to have a theatrical release. And honestly, it was an enjoyable movie. Um, I did laugh. I don't feel like it really brought anything new to the genre. If it had been in theaters, I don't think I would have recommended this movie. Um, for you to waste your money at the theaters, I would have just been like, wait for it to come on Netflix. So it's, it's, it is just enjoyable. It doesn't suck, but it doesn't bring anything new. It really gives you game night and date night kind of vibes. Let's go ahead and go on with Scoob, which is the only one on my list this month that I actually paid to watch. That one was just okay you guys i was very disappointed as are most of the adults <laughs> who are watching scoob um i'm pretty sure there's some of you who did enjoy the movie but i grew up watching scoob and this is not what scooby-doo is this is scooby-doo for this generation which in turn is a good movie for the kids who are the intended audience we're not the intended audience. I mean, they may have had us kind of like in the back burner, which is basically all we got for the movie was like the first like 15 minutes of it, which was really, really good. Um, that's kind of where I wish the story would have continued. But breaking up the game into two separate, um, basically storylines, I feel like really, in my opinion, hurt the movie. And then, you know, you're at incorporating the superhero uh, genre into Scooby-Doo as well because you're trying to stay relevant with the young kids. But I feel like it was just too much going on. It was very disappointing for me, you guys, because again, I grew up with it. This is not what Scooby-Doo is, in my opinion. I, just, I wasn't here for it. And But again, we're not the intended audience. And let's face it, the kids, and I'm sure if you had kids and you grew up with Scooby-Doo, your kids might actually be enjoying um, this movie. Let's go ahead and go on with the half of it. Honestly, that movie was really good. I actually went into this movie not knowing anything about it. You can find this one on Netflix as well. The story is about Ellie and Paul. Ellie is the smart kid who actually uh, makes a couple bucks extra bucks at school by writing papers for uh, the fellow classmates Paul ends up hiring her to write him a love letter to Esther the pretty girl from school but um, the twist is that Ellie actually is also in love with Aster. And like the friendship that Paul and Ellie end up um, growing within this movie is so great. Let's move on to the only Prime video movie that I have in it is The Best of Night. This movie is not going to be for everybody. Um, I feel like if you are a fan of sci-fi, you're really gonna love this movie. Um, if you like like the X-Files, the Twilight Zone, you're going to enjoy this movie. If none of that that I just said interests you, then you're not going to like this movie. You're going to find it to be boring. Me personally, sci-fi is not really on the top of my favorite genres. It kind of falls further down, but I still enjoy them and I'll still watch them from time to time. For me, The Vast of Night was enjoyable. 
and that I have to do I have to really think about it you guys because I was almost gonna put it in okay but the third act I feel like really kind of brought everything together for me to put it into the enjoyable section here now in this one we do follow two characters one who is uh, we're in the 1950s you guys and we're following um Faye who is a switchboard operator and we're also following um Everett who is a charismatic um radio host is that right? I don't know. Well, you know, you know, back in the day when there was no TV, he did the radio, you guys. <laughs> All happens within one night, which I actually really enjoy. I find it to be very, very intriguing. I know that a lot of stuff, you can't do stuff like that. But something like this, I feel like it's really, really cool. Um, so basically, we're in a small town in New York. Not New York. <laughs> basically, we're in a small town in New Mexico. Of course, what do you do in small towns? you go and you just and the whole town damn town goes to uh see the basketball game but of course there's those few that are working like Faye and Everett and um of course the other people who you know I would be the one that would be at home because I wouldn't want to be at a basketball game well you know it's a small town so maybe I would have while Everett is broadcasting uh Faye actually ends up hearing this very strange noise that really just brings everything um to the hunt of what this noise is um again since i did mention the twilight zone and the x-files so around the time when aliens was a was a thing when we would see this a lot like in movies and oh my god what's on the other side what's in the sky and it's very interesting you guys but you really if you watch this movie if you are interested and if you're not really into the x-files twilight and all that that i have said you really 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 gotta stick with it because like the first like 20 minutes of the movie it's not good you guys it's it's really not so you really gotta stick with the movie and then um since we are in the time period where it is a lot of radio that do get a lot of talking there's not any kind of real action the movie kind of just stays here so we're doing a lot of interviews well basically it's two interviews but they are very long a lot of running around it is very much kind of like an indie type very low budget film and move on because I've, I've lingered too much on this movie if you've seen the best of light let me let me know what you guys think about it because like i said it's not for everybody Moving on to the next netflix movie on my list and that is the wrong missy and that one is just you know you tried um it is a happy madison production and let's face it nothing good has been coming out of that i don't know if this is the bad movie that adam sandler was talking about when he was snubbed from the oscar that he said he was gonna make you know the worst movie actually i don't think this is it because i feel like adam could go worse than this to be honest with you i do have a review on this i i don't really want to talk about this movie anymore but just don't watch it it's very cringy and wrong and no let's go ahead and move on to uh unbreakable kimmy schmidt this is a netflix series and it came out with kimmy uh versus the reverend which is an interactive um movie uh, well i don't know if it's a movie i'm considering a movie it's like an hour and a half long or an hour and 20 minutes long and I'm gonna I'm going to incorporate it here now if you weren't a fan of the show then this just won't be for you I mean it's silly but I really really enjoyed the the, the series I think it, it I think it was a lot of fun to be honest with you and um I really enjoyed uh this interactive Kimmy versus the Reverend and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in enjoyable um, so you're actually interacting with you get to pick the storyline, which is really really cool You get to pick out of I think four or five different options They give you about a minute uh, to actually choose otherwise, you know, it chooses for you um, Obviously once you kind of hit like a roll bump and if you incorrect option to get to the Happy ending that obviously it wants you to get it does, you know, tell you okay Let's try this again and obviously I kind of picked a couple of the harsher ones I mean obviously if you've seen the show, you know, which option it is that you should pick But you know, you want to see where it goes and I'm not gonna lie to you. It got a little dark It really did well, it got a little dark with the one that I chose That's when it gives you the option of what to do with the reverend and that one of the options was to shoot the reverend and honestly i thought that kimmy was just gonna shoot him like once maybe twice not empty the whole damn thing i was just like oh 
But you know what? Something about seeing Kimmy murder somebody didn't sit very well for me. So yeah, um, don't maybe don't pick that option. If you picked that option, if you saw this, what did you think when that happened? I enjoyed it very, very much. I thought it was a fun uh, deal to do with Kimmy. We got to get a little extra Kimmy in our live and kind of see where she kind of ended up more so, right, with her getting married. And, uh, the last movie for me would be uh, I Am No Longer Here or Ya No Estoy Aquí. It is also a Spanish movie that you get subtitles, how to think about it. Um, and honestly, this one was also really good. I found it to be really interesting. Do have a review about this one as well. And I've lingered about the other ones a lot, so I'm not gonna really say anything about it, but the movie really uh, uh, focuses a lot about the music and the impact that music has on one and just how to escape from your reality. So if you are into some of those movies that really focuses on music and this may be a movie for you, we go a lot between present time and uh, Ulysses memories. But these are all the movies that I saw in the month of May. Did you see any of the ones that I saw or what movies did you see? Um, how would you rank them? Let me know down below. First, before you guys click out of this video, don't forget to get a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I post something new. And until next time, I'll see you guys at the session. Bye!